Hello friends and fellow flyers, welcome to Buddy Flight Spotlight, my name is Oli and well today just like you saw in the title, we're gonna talk about the basics, the fundamentals of belly flying. Um, it's my view, my take on the subject, uh, we, most people probably have different opinions on it but I think this will summarize what a beginner or even an intermediate or an even an advanced flyer must know about belly flying. So here it is, the three main components of a good <laughs> belly flight is stability, neutrality and range of motion. Let's not waste any time, let's dive right into the first component, stability. What dictates stability on your stomach is, hands down, your hips level. Where your hips are compared to the rest of your body will make you stable, unstable, make you drive easily or anchor you in the wind. H how you should imagine or think about your hips in the wind, well think of it as a spoon that you put under the faucet. I learned that word <laughs> last week as our faucet at home just broke and start working. Anyway, the point is, you imagine cleaning a spoon and, and you just put the spoon under the jet of water. If you put the spoon facing up against the jet of water, well, you're gonna make a mess because the water goes in and <laughs> spray everywhere. But if you, put, if you place the spoon upside down, then the water just flows under and surrounding the spoon. Well, when you fly, your hips does the same thing to the wind. The wind is a fluid in movement. If your hips are high and your butt is up, then you will, you will yes, catch more wind. You might lift a bit, a little bit more. But the truth is, you'll create so much turbulence around your body gonna be hard for you to remain stable on the opposite side if your hips are low then the wind glide on you and it, it it sprays around you and you'll definitely be more stable so how do you work on that well obviously you, you need to fly you need to go inside and, and practice uh, having a stable position and also having an unstable position you can practice being stable even with an unstable position course we're going to talk about that later range of motion but you can also practice those those mind body connection outside of the tunnel the thing is the thing is there's a reason why some people are unstable they they know they have to have their hips down they just can't do it and you're like push your hips push your hips and you're using your shoulder being like and and they just don't do it and they just and they just don't do it why not because they don't want to but because some can't so not not everybody who fly actually have the mobility to bend in half and and to be like crazy crazy stable some people are older some are some are injured some are just really really not flexible so you have to know where you stand in on the spectrum of flexibility and mobility um, so here's a simple really simple test you can do uh, first you can lay on the floor you can have a mat or not doesn't doesn't matter um, you can lay on the floor you want to lift your chest and knees off the floor that is a good indicator if you actually have the mobility and the strength and the flexibility in your hips, glutes and lower back to push your hips down. It's not so much about pushing your hips down because it's, it's a, there is a floor, you can't push, you need, you need, but you can pull, you can pull your back, your upper body up and you can pull your legs up. If you can do that, there you have it. You can have a stable position. You're, you're, that is possible for you. Um, if you want to push this exercise a little bit further, reach and try to touch your heels 
without grabbing your ankle. So that is a mobility test. Can or can't, it doesn't matter because if you're actually trying this, well, you, again, like it's, it's really good. And the last step could be to grab your ankle and to push against your hands and try to bend and lift the upper body as much as you can off the floor. Uh, that is not necessary. If your goal is to fly at 100% on your stomach and remaining on the net, yeah, you, you could practice this for as long as you need, but, but that's not the point. The point is just to push the exercise a little bit further and test your limit for once. Um, Oh, Kim, so let's say let's say you uh, you are at this point where you can kind of lift your upper body and your and your legs off the floor but but not that much and you you know you're not a stable belly flyer what do you do well you can you should spend a couple minutes trying to get stable not not trying to do points not trying to to lift and move and turn a couple minutes to actually work on your stability. Ask your instructor, he has drills for you. Um, work on your range of motion, we're gonna talk about that later, but you could also add a couple exercise to your daily workout routine. If you don't have a daily workout routine, well, you should start with this one. The CC squat. Uh, I've discovered this uh, this exercise on Instagram. I want to say a couple of weeks ago, but it's probably it's probably been a longer time than that. Probably months. Man, time flies. Anyway, Julian Smith. If you're interested, um, he's a, he's a fitness guy. He loves CC squat, and he recommend this exercise. And I think it could be one of the best exercise to work on your mind-body connection when it comes to hips, glutes, lower back, and legs connection. So, what is a CC squat? Well, here it is. First of all, it's a squat where you do not bend your hips. You actually want to push them forward, keep them flat. You, you only want to bend your knees and remain stable through the entire motion. Uh, it's not one of those exercises where you can add a, 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 a power component to it. You don't want to add, shouldn't add weight right at the beginning. Uh, you could, I guess, but but I, I will not recommend it. Uh, try with your own body weight first. And um, by the way, if the stability component of the exercise is what's challenging you the most, you can always add a chair just to remain more stable through the entire motion. Anyway. So to start this exercise, first, you wanna tilt your pelvic up. Pelvic tilt, we're gonna, you're gonna hear me say that so often when it comes to flying. It makes an amazing difference to be to understand pelvic up and down. That might mean rolling a little bit your lower back in. Uh, it, will, it might feel like that. It's like sinking your butt in itself. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you wanna do that first important you have to do it if you don't you place your you place your lower back in a really uncomfortable position that could be risky but again I'm not an expert I'm just saying don't do that <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it uh, then you when that that's done and your glutes abs legs pelvic is engaged now you start bending your knees you can stay as long as you can on your heel. You can bend your 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 ankle right away. At this point, go with what feels more natural, more comfortable. It doesn't matter. It just matters that you do it. It doesn't matter how you do it at this point. Uh, I would recommend to not go too low at first. Just bend a little bit. Try to try to stay in control. Find, find your balance. Um, when you feel comfortable, you can go lower and lower and lower. And if you're able to reach a point where your your knees are actually very close to the ground, I mean, you're good. Like that exercise is good for you, but but you have the mind-body connection sufficient enough to be already a really stable belly flyer. 
but it's a good exercise anyway. I would suggest a couple repetitions until you feel it, but I would also suggest to pause at the lowest point of the movement and to hold that position for a little. Because when you fly, you fly for minutes, two minutes. Well, if you can only hold that position for two seconds and you're dying, well, maybe trying to hold it for a longer period of time would be good for you because you definitely lack endurance. So, yeah, good exercise. Try that. And uh, by the way, keep breathing. It's important. Okay, second, second component of a good belly position, belly flying position, would be neutrality. Your capacity to remain neutral makes you a fun flyer to coach, but also a safe flyer to fly with, to share time with. Um, if, if, you, if you're the kind of flyer who at some point just lose control and go forward, because we see those things happen all the time, while well, you're just a loose cannon inside. We never know exactly when you're gonna strike, and it can be it can be quite sketchy. So neutrality is important. Being able to remain neutral, stable, stable, and neutral are two things completely different. You can be super stable, going all over the place, but you can also be very neutral. Okay, so. To understand how to remain neutral, um, it, it's good to understand. It's good to understand why you're actually moving inside. The main factor that makes you move is the angle of your body. If, and when I say angle, I'm talking specifically your hips level, knees level, thighs, thigh, thighs level, compared to your shoulder level. If your shoulder, wait, I'm gonna show you. I brought, I brought this to make it clearer. So, okay. So, let me see. So, what happened when I say angle? I mean the difference between your hips and your shoulder hips hips <laughs> okay when i say angle what i mean is is your upper body sinking lower than your hips or is your body lifting higher than your hips level depending on the scenario you're gonna you're gonna have a drive you're gonna drive forward you're gonna drive backward you can voluntarily create that angle you can also have it without understanding that you have it. Depending on your body type, depending on uh, your your level of body, depending on your level of awareness, your your posture, your position, those angle will be more or less uh, challenging to compensate. Using angle in your posture and your position will will make you faster, will make you more efficient because you're not just going to use limbs to move, you're gonna use your entire body as one big wing. So, that being said, how to actually control that angle so it, it doesn't influence your flight to be neutral. So, first of all, you, you have to understand with what do you actually apply pressure only your lower legs or your entire legs does it come does it come from hips to knees knees to toes or is it is it toes to hips well to understand that to understand how much pressure you apply with the back of your body you have to again lay down on the floor and practice this you need to you're gonna practice two things on the floor First, you will apply pressure on the floor with your knees. You will sink your knees down against the floor, even if, if, even if that means lifting a little bit your butt and your hips away from the floor. I want you to apply pressure and then you will bend and extend your legs. That's what most people who have a drive forward do. 
when they bend their legs, when they extend their legs, they don't just do it at the knee level. Their hips is actually engaged. Maybe it's a lack of mobility, like we said earlier, or maybe it's just because you'd ha you've never made the connection of this, your mind, your hips, your knees, and your toes. So first exercise, apply pressure, and then extend and bend your knees. The second exercise will be completely different. It will completely change your angle, the angle of your body. You're gonna do this. You're gonna raise your knees off the floor. It will engage your glutes, engage your the back of your legs, the, the your lower back. It might feel uncomfortable if you're if you like mobility. And when your knees are off the floor, then you're gonna extend and bend your legs. It doesn't seem like a big adjustment to your position, but it does make a huge impact when you're flying. Because now that you're lifting your knees off the floor, that removes a lot of pressure against the wind. And so you're gonna move your legs and so it will move you backwards and forwards, but it will not influence your angle. Or, or if you had an angle and you had your lower body up, then lifting your knees up will actually sink your lower body down, creating less angle, creating less lift, making you more neutral. That's what's up with your lower body. Now, at your shoulder level, there is the same thing happened. What you're going to be doing is, if you do have tennis ball, everybody has tennis ball, but if you don't, just don't, don't use them. Or you can use a broomstick or nothing, it works. What you're going to be doing is, you will apply pressure against, I'm going to use tennis ball because I have tennis ball. You're going to put place a tennis ball around your elbow on your forearm really try again it doesn't matter where exactly just for the sake of the the example you're gonna apply pressure against those tennis balls and you're gonna push your arms forward and pull your arms backwards that's creating that the, the fact that your elbows are low and applying pressure against the wind create more lift. If you are one of those flyers who always drive backwards, you probably have, you pro probably apply too much pressure with your arms, with your upper body. On the opposite hand, if you raise your elbow higher, so you don't apply pressure anymore against the tennis ball, they, they're just gonna stay there. And you push and pull your arms back and forth what you are actually doing is reducing the pressure that the pressure on the wind and so reducing the angle so playing with the pressure on your lower body and upper body will help you find balance um, nobody has the same body type man and woman doesn't have the same body type um, maybe in your case, you have to apply more pressure here and there, or maybe in your case, you have to reduce pressure here and there. You need to practice, you need to try. You need an instructor to help you. You need, you need, to, you need to practice. It, it, in the end, it's your body, your flight, your position, your posture. Um, but, but understanding that pressure up and down and pressure up and down with your legs and, and arms makes an impact on the angle that you're flying in and so create a, a, a drive forwards or backwards that's the most common thing we see that's why first-time flyer they need an instructor because most people have an angle most people have a drive and so so yeah angle learn them use them fly better fly faster oh Kim third component range of motion uh, this is everything I've written down about um, neutrality and stability and this is what I've wrote about range of motion 
nothing. <laughs> we're gonna go, we're gonna go freestyle on this one. Um, range of motion, when I say range of motion, what I mean by that is your capacity to modify your position without losing control and stability and neutrality. So let's say I'm in front of my friend grip and, and I, I, wanna, I wanna grip it. I wanna go and just grab the grip. Well, if all I ever known as like, as a belly position is this, and I can't move away from this boxy, bulky position. Well, maybe trying to reach for that grip will actually push me away from that grip. And so range of motion is your capacity to modify your position remaining stable, neutral, in control. I'm talking about legs. I'm talking about arms. I'm talking about chin and head and spine and hips, everything. If you can't move away from the position you know, then you're at risk all the time of losing it, losing that position, losing that stability or that, or that neutrality. If you're with someone and you're trying to reach for a grip while you're at risk of pushing yourself away in the glass, missing missing the grip, smashing the ma smashing into your friend. Um, being working on range of motion is work is the actual it's the real life aspect of working out. When you go to the gym you work out to become stronger, faster, with more endurance, whatever. Well that is the training aspect. That is the stability, that is the neutrality. Range of motion is the actual use of neutral instability if you go to gym to get stronger and you happen to need that strength to lift this box then it's useful if you learn if you practice stability and neutrality and you're here ready to to, to, to pull your to pull to pull your parachute and as soon as you go to, for it while well, you just blow yourself on your you just blow yourself on your back well you are stable when it comes to the actual action of doing something, then you lose control. So working on range of motion is necessary. It's important. Even if your goal is just to belly fly, at some point you're gonna want you want to reach grip. You'll want to reach for your, for your, your parachute. You want to deploy. You'll want to check your altimeter. You'll want to reach for the door frame. Jesus, so so often they fly well. People, they're stable. They're in control. Times over. Go for the door frame. Try to reach it. Push themselves away. It's like Jesus. If you can't reach for the damn door frame, there is a problem. <laughs> so so practice it. Practice your range of motion. Touch for your head, for your elbow, for your, your chin. Reach for your back. Fly with one hand. Fly with two hands in your back. One knee, one knee up, two knees down, legs open, legs crisscross. Work on your range of motion. You're gonna get better. You're gonna look better. You're gonna be more stable, more confident in your flying. Uh, it, it, it will opens up new, new, It's the essence of freestyle. If your goal is still freestyle at some point, it's the essence of it. You need to work, you need to practice weird positioning and find stability in those weird positions. So, yeah, range of motion, practice that. Okay, so that will be it for the three main component of belly flying um, there is more to it belly flying is not basic there's nothing basic about belly flying when you front layout flares when you or when you out face head up head down it doesn't matter you're you're on your stomach you're on your front body and that's what belly flying is it's using your front body to fly so so there's nothing basic about it <laughs> nothing Mm, it, it is the first position that you learn and because of that some some people 
well, they, they, they associate belly flying with beginner flyer, but there's nothing, there's nothing basic about belly flying. So play with the angle, practice your stability, practice your instability, and uh, don't forget to have fun doing it because uh, we tend to take ourselves too seriously sometimes. It's fun to uh, flip on your back, bounce a couple times on the net and have a good laugh. Remember that whatever you're working on, inform your instructor beforehand. He will help, he will be happy to help, and he will make sure that everything you do is safe. That being said, have a good day, night, evening, whatever, morning. Have a good time. Just have a good time.